What's up, y'all? It's your guy, the Yogi, Eben Britton, and this is the Ebb and Flow Podcast. So good to be with you all on this magnificent day. Today's episode is a really fun one. A little bit heavy, I will say. Um, it's with a woman named Maisie Bristol. She is a tarot reader and life coach. Um, this is a good one. I don't know what, uh, you know, we all have, I don't know what I'm saying. My experience with tarot has been profound at times, very interesting. Tarot is an ancient esoteric art, um, a very interesting, insightful, at times powerful medium for accessing information on other planes of reality or accessing information from other planes of reality. Tarot is, tarot really has a personality of its own, which is interesting. With many of these esoteric sciences, there's an element of humor and there's an element of once you're given a certain message, there's nothing left to receive. And when you continue to go down a rabbit hole of asking questions after having received the message that you needed in that moment, tarot can begin to play with you a little bit. And that was definitely what happened to me. Maisie gives me really a 1000% spot on reading. It was exactly what I needed in the moment I received it. She gives a really nice breakdown of the basics of tarot. Um, if you're interested in reaching out to her for a, for a reading or a consultation, all of her information is in the show notes. I encourage you to check it out. Check her out. She's super talented and gifted. When you watch this episode on YouTube, she you can see her methodology when she does her reading, which is really interesting, and I talk about it a little bit. So if you're just listening, I had her describe sort of what she was doing to the best of her ability. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was very, very heavy and very personal and very necessary for me. Um, and you'll you'll hear it. <laughs> so enjoy this one. It's a nice introduction to tarot cards and the ancient esoteric art form of tarot reading. I think you guys will enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. Um, before I send you off to enjoy it, y'all, hey, man, if you're looking for more sleep, better sleep, more energy, to have energy but not the jitters, and to experience that calm focus to stabilize your mood, you've got to be supplementing with magnesium. I use it every day. It's one of my favorite supplements in life period, magnesium is super important for your body's well-being and your mind's well-being. Great for your heart health, brain health, bones, organs. Magnesium is a wonder molecule for sure. It's involved in over 200 processes in the human body and we need it. It's great to help you get a better night's sleep. Getting a better night's sleep means you're a better, more productive, more efficient, happier, healthier human being. And that's really what it's all about, isn't it? 
There is no better magnesium product than Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Head over to magbreakthrough.com forward slash ebb and flow. Use code ebb and flow 10 to get 10% off your next order. Okay, I highly recommend it. Check it out. There's a link in the show notes. Go get you some magnesium. Experience the best sleep of your life. Um, merch. Dope new psychedelic ebb and flow power tribe t-shirts are available. Check it out. Higherpowerworkshop.com. We've also got yoga mats. We've got hoodies. All kinds of good stuff over there. Another great way you can support this show. Um, what else? If you're watching this episode, you'll notice once again, I am bathed in red light. This is thanks to my brothers and sisters over at Vital Red Light. Going to have Jake Cruz of Vital Red Light on the podcast here pretty soon to talk about all of the powerful benefits. This thing is amazing. It's incredible. I feel super calm. Uh, Do it in the morning. Do it at night. Powerful stuff. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, That's about it, folks. Enjoy this episode. It's a fun one. And uh, that's about it. Lots of love to you guys. Have a magnificent rest of your day. And I'll see y'all on the flip side. Peace. You have unlocked the eternal link to internal source. The key of imagination. Your admission. Access to the enlightened dimension. A gateway at the junction of darkness and light. The place at which the chaos of our conditioned frame of mind give way to a life in constant flux, only to be mastered through vigilant discipline. Peaceful times may come, testing times may go. This is the ebb and flow. What's up, peeps? Hey, got an excellent guest for you guys today. Very excited to have this conversation with Maisie Bristol. She is a tarot reader, a coach. Maisie, it's great to have you here. Hi, it is so nice to be here. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Absolutely. Welcome to the ebb and flow. This <laughs> is uh, This is very much in line with what we like to think about, explore on this show, and um, I'm super excited to dive in. Tarot has been a super, um, I would say, powerful medium throughout my life. I've had a number of very significant, um, impactful tarot readings. Really? That's cool. Um, along, <laughs> yeah, Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I'm a big, I come from a long family, a deep rich lineage of witches and crazy people really and, that's um, great <laughs> yeah yeah so this is very much in line with you know how i live my life and how i look at the unseen realms of reality and all of that good stuff and so i'm really stoked to to dive into this with you um you said before we before i hit record that you you were also in a past life, an athlete, you were a D one athlete yourself. I was. <laughs> um, and, uh, I think there's so much, um, you know, we don't really, I, I think, and perhaps it's only us athletes in particular, we don't give enough acknowledgement or credence to the path we walked as, as athletes, as, as physical as people who were really reaching for the heights of their physical uh, power, capability through sport, and how that, I think, innately leads one on a spiritual journey, and how the physical body is such an incredible vessel for exploring the, the spiritual realms of life, the deeper mysteries of this experience we call being human. And, uh, so I'm intrigued how 
you found your way to tarot and what was it about tarot that called out to you in in going down this path that this rebirth of yourself or this new life of yourself um as Maisie Bristol the tarot reader mystic witch (laughs) (laughs) um well there's a lot to unpack there first of all I want to say for the record that um anyone who has been in a high intensity environment regarding sports should be like lauded and applauded and just revered because it people don't understand how hard it is it is so mentally and physically and like emotionally Mm. taxing that um you honestly have nothing else to think about when you're in those moments like all you think about is your sport (laughs) and how you could be better at your sport totally like even if you're in college even if you're out of college and pros i mean like life even though you have all this money, if you're a pro, like that's not, you don't live life. Like you do your sport and it starts from, you know, Mm. if you go, if you're in college, like I swear I didn't have really like a college experience because it, it's just, no. No. Yeah. So, um, yeah, absolutely. You're totally right on sports. uh, Congratulations. You did something super hard and, um, I love that. It causes you to be introspective. I think like, like you say, how can I be better and everything, but, uh, for team sports, especially, I feel like you have um, this mentality that you have to provide for the team or that, you know, it's a greater good mm. situation. So you have less time to think about mm-hmm. yourself and how to like better like self growth there uh, because it's mm. like self growth for a purpose. It's for them, not for you, <laughs> you know. Um, so sure. Uh, in call it like I, I had tarot in mind. I, you know, brought a deck to me or with me to college. You know, it's not like. It was, mm. I had it in high school, started there, went through college, did my sports, and then um, I ended up later in life uh, like working with it a little bit more, but it was only until after college that I really like found myself. Tarot kind of uh, landed in my lap. <laughs> I, I was interested mm. in it. I did it with other people. Um, but I, initially I was using it because I loved it so much as a way to make extra cash. I was in a spot. I thought this might be a quick fix. And then I ended up really enjoying it because I realized I was helping people a lot and it was working and I love tarot. So I didn't really think it just, it just happened. It was like those just moments. It that was like just landed. natural. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and then it was, uh, it was a whole nother journey after that to really accept myself, my new self. Um, I just Mm, remember, I mean, I'm like seven years into the business or this is my, my business is seven years old now. Um, so in 2022 and I just remember for the first like four years, I did not mention it first. It wasn't like, even though it was a priority for me, I didn't say it Mm. to other people right away because I it it registered all these other reactions that I didn't want to have to answer to. Mm. If I was dating, I would, you know, wait until like the third date to say it. (laughs) And it just took Mm. time to like really embrace it because um, it is weird. It's a little interesting. Not everyone does it. But now I'm like, that is so cool. And... (laughs) I'm not yeah, single totally. now, but like if, you know, recently, not recently, but you know, a while ago when I was single, um, that's like the first thing I would say when on dates, I'd be like, yeah, I'm a tarot reader and this is going to happen. And if you don't like it, you can leave now. <laughs> totally. <laughs> like yeah. I'm not changing who I am. <laughs> so. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it was a long, it was a long process to get comfortable. I mean. I think everyone experiences that on some level uh, if they're going through life and doing it the right way. I've been reading a lot of, uh, I just finished reading this book by Osho. You know who Osho is? A little bit. Uh, So you you maybe you've seen the documentary, um, Wild Wild Country, great documentary, Mm -hmm. sort of paints him in this madman light, which isn't totally accurate. Uh, but he's, he's just a brilliant, uh, philosopher, mystic yogi. And, uh, this book intuition, knowing beyond logic, it's a really powerful book. And essentially he talks about how we function, human beings function through three structures or three paradigms in our life. They're the head or the mind functions and the intellect the heart functions from intuition 
and the body functions on instinct. And this thing has been cultivating in me for probably the last couple years of getting out of the mind and into the heart. Mm -hmm. And um, much of my spiritual process, my emotional process, whatever it is, you know, this, this thing that I'm doing, this ride that I'm on, it's really, it reveals itself over and over again to be getting out of my head and into my heart and living from this place of intuition rather than allowing my intellect or my mind to create all of these obstacles. Cause that's sort of the, that's the, the programming of the mind is to like analyze, make sense of, figure out the logical function in that plane of rational and logic and the known. Mm -hmm. But the heart really functions from this place of the unknown. And, um, you know, when your inner guide, your inner guide gives you all of these, and he, he boils it, by the end of the book, he's boiled it down to getting in touch with your inner guide. And, uh, you know, that inner guide is that thing going, Maisie, you're a tarot reader. You have a gift at this thing, whatever it is. And our rational mind is like, yeah, but what is that? And those people over there are going to think I'm weird or it's not logical or it doesn't make sense. Or for me, like, Eb, you're a yogi and you love to do yoga and meditate and breath work. And yeah, but Eb, you were this football badass. How, <laughs> how are people going to make sense of that? They're going to think you're so weird. You know, and the, the true the true magic of my life continues to reveal itself being found in that place of just surrendering to that inner voice and letting go of all the mind stuff that's creating that that uh static around my truth you know mm -hmm. and i think that so many people as far as i can tell from doing this podcast now for the last couple of years and um the audience I've developed or whatever it is on the community I've developed on social media, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are hearing that inner voice and, you know, the greatest task I think of this lifetime is to take yourself out of, get your mind and your ego out of the way so that your, your true self can emerge so that you can be who you're meant to be in this world. And so I think it's really a powerful story of, what you shared, you know, like you, you had this process of coming to terms with your truth and then finally surrendering to it and how important that is in one's life path. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not, that's not to say that I still don't struggle. I've, I have oh, many absolutely. struggles you know, absolutely. About, around this particular topic. <laughs> uh, I'm very much someone who is like a natural born people pleaser and uh, care mm -hmm. a lot about mm -hmm. like what, not other people think, but more like my close, close ones think like my family or like my friends, like I, that's been a thing that I've had to work with for a long time. And, and, uh, I'm still, oh you know, trying to get into this mode where you're, you're embracing yourself, like your decisions, your Absolutely. movements and trust it. And that's the, the harder part I think is to trust that, you know, what's best for you or trust that, you know, what you're mm. doing, um, and just let go. Absolutely. That's such an important point because it's never like you get there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, it's you always never, a journey. <laughs> the, always. And there's some like thing you some some nook or cranny that you didn't look at or didn't see that reveals itself to you. And and then the rabbit hole goes even deeper. Mm -hmm. um, so and I think that something that's super powerful about tarot to me is that it really I don't know what it is and maybe you can you know maybe this is a good place to start this conversation but it feels to me as though tarot functions from that place of the unknown the unseen you know that energetic vibration inside ourselves that we are aware of to some degree some more than others but that we're, our mind is sort of inhibiting us from seeing clearly. And tarot somehow is like this scalpel that sort of goes into the center of it and comes back with this message. Yeah, there are um, two responses that I get from people 
uh, more often than not. And that one of them is uh, I like, thank you for reassuring me of what I already knew. And the other one Mm -hmm. is that's very interesting. I get that. That makes sense. I just had never thought about it that way. So both of those answers Mm -hmm. (laughs) suggest that like, you know, it within it's like an intuitive thing. Um, But you know, the hard stuff is hard to look at sometimes. And if you have a guide to help you to really illuminate it so to a point where it's just um, undeniable. Uh, for me as a tarot reader, I know exactly what I see. Um, uh, but then that, my job is to explain that to other people. Uh, but for instance, if I ask a question and I see a certain card, it's like, well, duh, like that's the answer. <laughs> it, it can be, right. it can be so um, obvious and stark the answers that you get from tarot because it's like of course that card would come up yeah. in this situation um so now i know automatically <laughs> the what death it's card <laughs> or like just you know am i holding on to someone who's not going to commit to me and you get the lovers reverse like yes there's just like it's mm. not a no it's not a maybe it's a yes you are <laughs> so um right right yeah it, it's it's interesting the one thing i will say is that Tarot is great for in the moment queries and um, developing, uh, you know, as we as we live our life. Um, astrology is good to help that self reflection in um, understanding like where we are starting from, what our base is, how we, how we are born, and then using that information to then learn where the pitfalls are, so that we can uh, know where to start or know what to think about as we grow. Mm. so for example Mm. if you're like i need to work on uh opening up and trusting other people and you meet someone new and you're thinking should i open up to this person that would be a time to do a tarot card reading right but if you're thinking deeper well you can also do this with tarot cards you can think deeper and you can you can pull cards on these questions but astral that's what natal charts are really good for is that if you're going okay why am i like that like what how was i born to be like that then you look at the chart and you're like oh that's interesting that illuminates something Mm. so is there anything you would say is there any um i want to word this properly is there any what does tarot not oh i lost your video oh i'm here okay you're still there (laughs) um is there anything that what is what is the right and wrong ways to approach tarot or to is there any wrong way? Like, is there any sort of wrong way to think about it? Is there anything that... I don't know if that makes sense. But is there any right or wrong... Is there a right and a wrong way to approach tarot? Or is there anything that you would say... Any, any perhaps, ill-fated choice or decision or use of the information one could use following a tarot reading ill-fated use of the information following a tarot reading so like you, you get you like get, get a get message you're in a situ uh well i was i was using that metaphorically because i've gotten the death card on like jobs or yeah i mean you know, but you know uh, that it partnerships mean, you know, or bad but um yeah yeah of course it's just like that's or trying or what I, what i'm getting from this is that you are asking uh how i would approach maybe it was, are there good and bad cards or are there good and bad messages how do you approach that and is there a wrong mm. way to look at it I guess so. Let me give you some more context because this guy, uh, there's a guy I, I have a lot of respect for. His name's Aubrey Marcus. Um, and uh, he had a post 
the other day and he said that he said something I thought was really interesting, which I agree with. And this isn't about tarot specifically, but this will give you what I'm this will give you the point of what I'm sort of getting after. As he said that um, I believe psychic readings are detrimental, but that doesn't stop me from occasionally having one done to check in on where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was interesting in the in this idea of as we're on this we're on this journey and you get this sort of you get this this information from another realm that's that's perhaps beyond the scope of the mind's understanding of where you're at, but then the mind uses the information to sort of to do everything it can to will the situation in a specific way. Does that make sense? Um, I think it mostly pertains... Or to pertains... pretend that we can see the future or something like that. Well, I think that mostly pertains to, like, what's going to happen, you know, readings. Like, mm-hmm. what's going to happen next yeah, year? Yeah. What's going to happen the next six months? Um, right. I think a lot... Of, I personally... I mean, I offered those readings. I personally would never do one for mm. myself because I feel like it's uh, it's true <laughs> because that you can take information and then mold it into something else. I just know that how my mind works. Maybe some other people don't don't do this, but I know how my mind works, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, this is happening!" And then you can kind of like put out that energy force, and like the law of attraction is like here. Yeah, um, of course. I think that's possible for sure, um, but. One thing that people should recognize is the fact that we all have free will. This is why I offer these readings anyway. Like, if you want it, I'll give it to you. Um, But you should know that you have free will to do or not do any of these things. Like, if you don't, if I say you're going to move in March and you get to March and you're like, I don't want to move, you don't have to do that. (laughs) You cannot, you can stay (laughs) if you want. And so it's really up to you the whole time. It's not faded. We're not Mm. like, I don't think anything is faded. Well, no, that's not true. I don't think that the cards fate your future. (laughs) I think things are faded. What do you think is faded? (laughs) Uh, Signs, messages. What do you say that again? (laughs) What? Which part? What do you think is faded? I think that um, nudges, intuitions, signs, meetings of you know, new people or meeting on the street or whatever that those are all fated to happen somehow. Mm. Um, I don't think we're fated to, uh, mm. I don't, I'm, I'm thinking a destiny or some, I would, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we're fated to be or not be with someone, but I do, but that's not true because I also feel that, um, you can meet someone at the wrong time. And it was fate that put you guys together at that time, knowing it wouldn't work out. There are mm. people like I see this in tarot cards. Like I can explain this if, with tarot cards, you know, uh, in a reading. But I feel that sometimes we meet what might be a, a perfect soulmate or whatever, but that person is just not ready. They're not in the right place in their life. We it could have worked out if you were both in the same place at the same time. It did. It. You did it. You weren't. You know, and it just didn't happen, and that was that was fate because you needed to learn a lesson from that relationship. It wasn't the one that was supposed to carry you through the rest of your life. Mm. Then we get into there like was some relationship in the non, or there were there was some there was some lesson in the inability to have a relationship. Yeah. Or like the resistance or the yeah, friction. Yeah, or, or the you're there to help that person understand why they weren't able to do this or get there with the perfect person. Um, mm. Yeah, tough lessons. <laughs> but, you know, everything yeah. that happens well, is a lesson. So. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt about it. And nobody said it was going to be easy. No. It's all, it's all learning. <laughs> life can be the, the point is, you know, you can't try to figure out life. I think that's where, where I mm. cross the threshold with tarot readings. Cause like, I mean, you can, you can do whatever you want, like go ahead and do the, all the tarot readings in the world. But like, 
the whole point of life is not to know. <laughs> it's to figure it out as you go. Mm, There's no way that I you can just that. speed up time and say, I got it now, like moving on. <laughs> like it takes a while. Mm -hmm. It's part of the process to not know, to not understand and to be okay with that. Mic drop, Maisie. <laughs> uh, fuck. Um, I totally agree. Um, for someone who is, let's reach out to the, let's reach out to the non-believers for a moment. For someone who's not, who, who's a non-believer, and perhaps it doesn't even matter because, you know, that's your, that's your deal and you can go through life being a non-believer and it's not really our job to convince you that tarot is something worthwhile, but just for the sake of a, an exercise, what, how do you sell tarot to the non-believers? Um, well, you can't sell anything to someone who doesn't want it. So I can lead a horse to water. Great but I can't answer. Make it drink. I can't make it drink. So my philosophy Amen on skeptics is that I'm totally happy to read for anyone really if you're a skeptic let's do it I don't care um I'm not here to convince you but my only criteria for that is to is a skeptic who is open-minded if you're not open-minded you're not right, going right. to like it, it doesn't <laughs> you're matter. gonna find everything wrong yeah. with it yeah. and then nitpick until you're right you know so I don't want to read for you right. if you're not open at least a little bit mm. So mm -hmm. I want the horse to drink yeah. the water is what I'm saying. I'm not trying to like force feed. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's sort of the interesting conundrum of, of doing the podcast and uh, being in the place that I'm at in my own, you know, unfoldment where in order to have a podcast, you sort of have to ask these questions that, you know, there aren't answers to, or, or the answer is that exactly, you know, but. I always feel like it's inter it's an interesting exercise to explore like what happens when, you know, uh the immovable object comes into contact with the unstoppable force and what does that look like? But I know you're totally right. I mean, you're not going to do a reading for someone I mean, you, the the age-old adage of you can lead a horse to water and not and you can't make him drink is yeah, I mean, but I've also had it in this day and age, especially. I've had it the other way too, where um, they're not skeptics; they're very much believing in tarot, and then they don't like my answer, and so then they don't like the reading. Mm. <laughs> um, and I've had yeah. this happen a couple. What do you times. say to them? Well, I don't. You know, if you want a refund, sure. Like, have it. I guess. Like, it. I. You, you, <laughs> I that was my job. I did it, and um, I can't. I'm not going to change the answer. Uh, if we read, if we pulled cards again, we'd probably get the same answer. So I say, right. okay, I'm so sorry that you were unhappy. And, um, sure. If you want a refund, I'm happy to do that. And then I've had this couple happen a couple of times where I do the refund or I like, I, I apologize or say something a different way. I don't know. Um, which generally says the same thing. Uh, and they come back and they're like, I'm sorry. You were right. <laughs> I'm sorry that mm, I, I was yeah. overreacting and you were right. And I took it out on the reading. <laughs> I've had that happen. So, mm. you know, yeah, it's the mind. Yeah. That's the ego. The ego getting in the way mm -hmm. of the, of the message. Um, well, do you do, do you do, uh, remote readings? Yeah. I actually only do remote yeah. readings. Um, no, oh, really? I'm, I'm happy to do them in person, but I don't really live in a place where that's necessary or wanted. And I, and also everyone's online and I started the business online. So it's just been that way. I do email and video and any in-person events that if they come up. Nice. Can we do, would you do a little, uh, mini reading for me? Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you want? What do I want? Um, <laughs> big I, I, question there, Maisie. If you don't have, um, so a lot of people are like, I want a reading, but I don't know what I want. I don't have, I'm not going through a, like a life crisis and I need help on. Um, I offer, or I say this as an option. Uh, I have this personality reading that I do. Uh, 
which mm. is basically like how you see yourself and how um, the world sees you and uh, how that may look similar okay. or be different than what you think. And it's helpful for people who are who I don't know because they know exactly if it's right. Let's do that. Because <laughs> it's about them. Let's do that. Um, so let's let's do that. The the first card is how I how you see yourself and how other people see you. The second card is um, what you can't see, but what like drives you or motivates you. The third card is what mm-hmm. you uh, know about yourself, but don't show others. And then the fourth card is mm. what you can't see in yourself that other people see in you. Mm. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, everyone loves this one. Um, and I, it took me a, a second to think about it because I, I haven't actually done this spread in, the, in a while. So I, but it's, I always offer it to the people who, are, who don't know what to get. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on in my life and uh, a lot of big things happening. Um, but I, so I think this is actually a perfect way to go awesome. for the sake of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we don't go into like a one month long reading into your life and changes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So the way that this works, the way that I do this is um, I like to believe that the cards have their own energy. It's like they're, they're just like an old, their own life force. So when I shuffle, I often find that like they kind of pop out or fly out or get a little crazy. And then like, I just shuffle until Mm -hmm. they settle down. It sounds so funny to say about that. inanimate objects, but I, I swear that's just how it goes. Um, I get it. I've, I've experienced it. <laughs> so uh, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just like picking the cards that just pop up like that. And then I'm going to uh, cut the deck. Usually I cut the deck twice to get like a theme card, but you've already had three cards fly out. So mm. um, we're going to use I those. have? Yeah. The, as the those cards are talking. Yeah. They're literal messages flying at my face. So, um, it's always that. important to like pick them up. Okay. Uh, here. Right. Done. Okay. for people who can't who aren't watching on youtube will you explain what you just did there um, i don't know i don't yeah. even know what you did but <laughs> you, could you even like see you me my head is like cards. down here <laughs> did you um, did you put your ear to the cards like they're speaking to me uh no i just this is just the, I don't know what this is, but this is the process. So I, I just, I end up looking okay. Okay. <laughs> I look at the side of the card yeah. and then I just like, mm. visualize the person that I'm reading for just thanking me for the great reading. And so I basically, it's like a mm. law of attraction kind of moment. I just, that's what I do when I'm drawing. And, um, and then I kind of just like that. feel, <laughs> feel where to pick. And, uh, then I just have a sense of, relief when i picked the right spot i and uh i love that yeah and so that's kind of how it goes um so first card how we see the second card is how third card okay um uh okay so sometimes i start with the theme cards and sometimes I start with a spread today I'm going to start with the theme cards we have I said we have three but the last two you were talking about your changes in life and they like came Mm. out one of them came out right away and the other one came Mm. out a little later so I'm feeling like those are like separate so um I'm going to read those last this one came out earlier Maisie yeah can you explain what a theme card is and what a spread card is yes uh so the the four cards that we mentioned for the personality spread, uh, that's part of the tarot spread. <laughs> and then the mm. theme card uh, is basically like a way that I 
look at the spread with a bigger picture in mind, a, like a larger lens, like big picture to small. Mm. Um, so it just gives mm. you like a, a scope for the whole thing, for the whole identity, okay. I guess. If we're doing a personality spread, this gotcha. would be like the theme of the whole identity as opposed to like nitpicking certain parts. Mm. So Amazing. Okay, the, great. Thank the you. card for the whole identity or for your whole identity is the magician reversed. So mm. this card um, comes up when we're at the beginning of a journey. It comes up to show that we have all the tools in place that we need to succeed. Um, it's one of the first cards in the major arcana. So that's uh, the, one of the second parts of the tarot deck that talks about big life changes as opposed to day to day moments in the minor arcana. So the major arcana with this being one of the first cards just says that there's a whole like thing ahead of us, a whole like uh, journey ahead of us with big mm. life changes. So the point is um, the magician also has all the suits of the tarot deck. So we have got the cups and the pentacles and the swords and the wands and he feels like all mm. ready to charge. But yours is reversed, which means or makes me feel that even though you do have all the tools to succeed, you constantly feel like you need um, something else. You constantly feel like you're not prepared or mm. that you're not able to get to where you want to go or that there are too many obstacles ahead of you even uh, that you don't have what you need to to overcome all those obstacles. So it could be like a fight to a fight to succeed as opposed to like a confidence driven self mm. <laughs> self driven uh, attitude towards success. I feel like you are successful this is the kind of person who like is successful without trying you know like you don't try too hard but somehow mm. you get things you want but it's reversed here which makes me feel like you are successful but you don't see yourself as successful like you feel like there's always mm. more i'm not doing enough and i don't have everything i need to to do all the things that i want to do and it's just it seems more like a battle than it is easy mm. even though it may look easy for other people um so what you know about yourself and other people know about you, that's the first card. And we got the devil card, which is an interesting start. Mm. And if this were like a more internal, like one of the, I know this about myself and I keep it from other people. I would say that there's some like, <laughs> there's some uh, turmoil that is going on under, underneath that um, maybe some like depressive symptoms going on, which I'm not saying that it's applying to you. It's more like if that was in an internal space in the spread, that's what I would be saying. But the devil mm. talks about like toxic relationships that we have with um, ourselves or other people. And since this spread is about yourself, um, it has it talks mm. about a toxic uh, situation that you have with your own self confidence or self worth or something. And it really mm. ties back to this like magician reverse, the not doing enough. And so I feel like you get into this toxic cycle where you're like more and more and more, and then you don't really see how deep the how deep it's going, how deep the spiral is going, where you're setting, it's almost like it's a mental game where you're setting yourself up for failure and it hasn't even happened yet. Um, so the reason it comes up in a public space, what you know and what you're, what people around you know, is that I think you're very open with like, with these things, whatever mm. they are, uh, getting into cycles or uh, even, mm. you know, sad moments, depressive moments, uh, anything that has to do with, feeling trapped within your body or within yourself and not being who you want to be or not succeeding in the way that you mm. want to succeed. All that is think is something that you've talked openly about, which is why it's coming up in that public space. So mm. um, it's upright too, which means that it's not like a, it's like a constant process, but because it's in that public space, I think it's the awareness is really important. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I forget to breathe sometimes when I do readings and I like, I need to stop for a moment. Okay. Whew. Uh, so yeah. mm. the next one is, uh, what you don't know, but what motivates you. And we got the page of pentacles reversed. And this is part of the reason why I went on the same spiel with this card about not feeling like you're doing enough. Um, the page of pentacles when upright is a card of, uh, new beginnings, pentacles are the material things so like money job 
um, family. It's worth to like value, which is money, but also like self-worth. Um, and the pages are more like in reference to a playing card deck, they would be like the jacks, but they're like the female jacks. So they have like emotions and drive and they feel um, they're, they're dreamers and everything. So basically the page of pentacles in general is someone who is a dreamer, has big goals and has big um, ideas about what they want to be and, and, and who they want to be. And it's reversed, which makes me feel that uh, you, your motivation is to overcome this idea that you can't do it or that you're not enough or that you're too young or too inexperienced for whatever you want to do or whatever it is. Um, the drive to be successful stems from this thought that you aren't capable, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's like an overzealous mm -hmm. drive to show, not even other people, but show yourself that you can do it. It's not, this is nothing about this is about other people. It's about you and your own thought process. Yeah. Um, yeah. What you know about yourself, but don't show others is the six of swords. Um, this card is about leaving behind the past. Uh, and mm -hmm. swords for me are about actions. So it's like forgiving your past actions. So the fact that it's coming up upright in a place that you hide makes me feel that you have given up, uh, that you've been through some tough times that not everybody knows about, and um, that you um, still have a hard time like letting go of that and also of things that happen to you. So like anything that is dramatic or difficult sticks with you for a long, long time. <laughs> And uh, mm. maybe it can be so impressionable because this is kind of like your state. Like this is the, the devil is like the state that you have mentally. And so when things like this happen, it's easy to be like, that was because of me or, and then just go down this uh, spiral, mental spiral. Um, mm. So I, I do feel that, yeah, you hold on to things uh, quite a bit. You're very sensitive in that way. And then what, you don't see in yourself, but other people see in you. We have the Eight of Swords. So <laughs> this doesn't look fun. Um, but the point here is that um, she, we can see that she's blindfolded. I usually see this card as a symbol of uh, missing red flags or being like looking mm. away from the things that would help them. So you're just not seeing certain actions that you could be doing or, or not seeing the actions that you have done that have been beneficial so really just finding gratitude in like what you have done and uh, finding pride in what you have done. Um, so people, people see that, you know, how successful you are and what you've accomplished in your life, but they also see you as someone who's like, I'm not going to look at it. There's too much more to do. And I have uh, other goals in mind. Um, so you just like, you turn mm -hmm. away from that kind of that stuff. Mm. It was a lot. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't. What are you sorry for? I think it was right on, to be honest. <clears throat> Good. Of where I'm at currently. <laughs> the, um, I said right that we on. had two other cards was... that fell out. Do you want to know about them? They were, uh -huh. when you were talking about changes in your life, uh, the Hermit reversed fell out, and then the two of Pentacles yeah. reversed fell out. Um, and so the hermit mm. is, you know, people can, people probably can speculate what that means, but the, the hermit, when it's upright, it means that we're like drawing away from society to become, you know, better person and think mm. about what we want to be when it's reversed. It means like we are finally, um, putting ourselves out there again or being mm. pushed out there again, uh, you know, when we're yes. not ready or something. Yes. Um, in this case, it kind of looks like you feel like you're being forced out into the world to do something um because we have the two of pentacles reversed uh the two of pentacles means like we're juggling material things so like you got a new job and you also just bought a house so th those are two things mm. major things that happen at one time um but when it's reversed it can mean that we are uh that the world is kind of forced uh trials and tribulations regarding money and 
in time and status and whatever onto you where you have to you feel like you're overwhelmed basically with all those options hmm. so hmm. i don't know what that's about but uh it's <laughs> it seems it seems difficult <laughs> um yeah it sounds really heavy and difficult but uh I have the tools like that thing said, and it's really about me getting out of my own way of, and just realizing I have the tools and I'm ready, you know, and stop, stop overthinking it, over analyzing it, mm -hmm. holding on to things. It's time to let go. That's really, I mean, it was right on Maisie, seriously, all the way through. Awesome. Well, I'm Completely glad. Completely right on. <laughs> It always is, though, for me. It's like, yeah, I know. And the card, you know, the card says the thing that I've been thinking about for the last week. Yeah. And, I mean, if you get a tarot reading, you should feel that way. Like, and that, you know, I just find it interesting. Because if I said that whole thing to someone else, it wouldn't have been true at all. You know, right. That was specifically for you. Yeah. So you're naturally supposed to be like Yeah. That. I get that. I understand it. it. You spoke to my heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Super powerful. Um, I feel like that's, I mean, that's so, that transcends the personality. I guess that's, I don't know, for me, my understanding of personality, but it's sort of like a life moment reading. It goes deeper. I mean, it's hard. It's not hard, but I feel that um, most people don't know how deep tarot can go you know if you're like i want to read it how deep can it go <laughs> there's more um like for instance if you ask about your relationship i will more than likely tell you about mm. your patterns in relationships and your past relationships and how that's playing out into this current one you know it doesn't just focus on the, mm. the now yes christ we need another hour for my relationships <laughs> 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 Um, that's, that was spectacular. Uh, so I get the hermit a lot. It was interesting about the devil and the devil being upside down or reversed so that, or in the spot that it was in. So it's not about like me hiding things, but yeah, I yeah. definitely, I mean, I would mind. be a little concerned if it was like in a secretive spot because you could be inside yeah you would be feeling it inside but also that can mean that you're not even like registering it inside right so that's what i'm saying like it was yeah if it's yeah. in a public spot like that you've acknowledged whatever that is and for you and that you're working on it and so it doesn't really it's not a bad thing to see it there yeah no it totally i mean it 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 makes complete sense to me i, I think that the Whatever thing I've brought to the world, it's because of what I've experienced and been open to share about, you know, as far as my pain and the struggles I've been through and overcoming it and navigating it, etc. Navigating the darkness has been a big thing that, that I've spoken about a lot since leaving the NFL. Um, and that's always been a... Uh, I guess a headliner task of my life is coming to terms with the darkness in myself. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, and I've, I've gotten to a really incredible point in my life. I mean, I can't really say enough how miraculous my life has become, you know, through this process of coming to terms with myself. And coming mm -hmm. to terms with the darkness and the parts of myself that I thought I used to think were ugly or not suited for life or whatever it might have been or the things that I was ashamed of or felt guilty for and coming to terms with all of it. And it's interesting about the past card that you wrote or that you pulled or that flew out Um because I was literally just writing about today. I was writing about all these past things. And yeah. I had this intense moment of clarity. 
as I was writing about all the past things that I felt held so much weight. And it was almost like I was looking at books on a shelf. And it was like, what do those things have to do with my present state? Mm -hmm. What do those things, all of those past experiences, things, conversations, words, whatever it might have been, what is that? What do those things truly have to do with this moment right here where I'm at, where I'm standing? with my feet in the ground. Like, is that really what this is about? Is that Mm -hmm. what the future is going to be about? Or am I just holding on to something because I think I'm supposed to hold on to it? Right. You know, and, and, you know, it's really this interesting thing going back to Osho and, and sort of, I, I guess, you know, all the, all ancient spiritual teachings it's it's leading you towards following your heart and following your inner guide following your bliss you know Mm -hmm. and how in in western life or modern society how we've let the mind take control of everything and become the master that we start creating all of this resistance around our natural the natural gravitational force that's pulling us through our lives in the direction Mm -hmm. that the universe has deemed for us. Um, You know, and that goes back to that free will and things are fated or destined or if that exists. But, and I, I I think it's super paradoxical and that both are true, you know, because I think that we all have a, you know, there's something there is a purpose for us that we don't really understand or know about. And the game is letting go and letting God to use a a term from 12 step programs. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really fascinating. You know, it's totally, um, I, I feel blessed to be in the place that I'm in having done, the work that I've done and really having a deep relationship with a higher power. Um, you know, meditation has become a daily ritual for me for the last five years and it's completely transformed my life and my relationship to myself and others. And, you know, two years ago, three years ago, if I found myself in this place where I'm at right now, I would be totally overcome by it. You know, Mm -hmm. but because of the steps I've taken or the process that I'm, I'm, I've just, I just like, because I feel as though I don't have any choice. I've just surrendered to this process of Mm -hmm. going on the ride and observing rather than trying to figure it out. You know, I can look at this stuff and be present with it and then make a really intentional, conscious move from this place. Right. You know, rather than being caught up in the chaos, which as a Libra, I'm an air sign mm-hmm. and my whole life has been a battle in the mind. You know, yep. it's been like this war zone in my mind. Yeah, I was wondering how much air you have in your chart. If you keep talking about logical and mind and I'm letting go of my mind, I'm like, must be. Some yeah, air my sign whole, and have my whole thing is chart. about. <laughs> yeah, my whole thing is about getting out of the mind. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like my, it's been my whole life is like, Eb, stop thinking about it. You know the answer. Yep. Go that way. Take the leap. Get the fuck out of your own way and just jump. And that's just, that's been my life. You know, whether I like it or not, as much as I want to like will it and, and do the thing that I think is right or whatever, you know, it's like my whole life, everything that has been you know and and it's almost like effortlessly successful like you said and then I'm going wait but I can't be successful I can't yeah you're shooting obstacles you're not you're not worthy of that yeah so um really powerful Maisie I appreciate you doing that uh and I think you're super gifted you're I love your process like um (laughs) it's awesome 
it's true but, it's great everyone has their own thing it was funny because i've never really explained Absolutely. my process like that fully with where i go when i'm like diving into my desk like i've never talked about like how i love I that. that so um as i was talking that's why i was giggling because i was like it sounds so funny but <laughs> but this is just how it is <laughs> it is it's true you know i and and because of our I don't know, it, whatever it is, cultural indoctrination, the society, you know, all of these beliefs, we, it's like, we think that that is an illogical statement that there's life in that deck, but there is, there's <laughs> totally an energy and a intelligence to it that is happening beyond our sense of understanding, mental it's understanding. True. So I love that you, I love that you explained that and, uh, I appreciate that. Um, well, we're, we're winding down here. I'd love for you to share where people can get in touch with you or get a reading from you or tune into your coaching services or find you on social media, all that good stuff and, uh, everything else you have going on, please share it. Cause, uh, I think people could really use it. Awesome. Uh, yep. I am Tarot by Maisie. That's the, the business. And it's you can find me at www.tarotbymaisie.com. Or you can find me uh, at Tarot by Maisie. That's my handle on Instagram. And those are the main places uh, I respond to every single DM. So uh, if you have anything, any questions or what have you about um, tarot or offerings, uh, you can just ask me. I offer birth chart readings, astrology, tarot readings, um, coaching. I have a tarot deck. I offer this mental health subscription service now that just launched this year. And I'm hopefully it's gaining traction. It's called a uh, tarot pee, And, uh, it's basically like a monthly sit down that we have to talk about growth goals and, um, you know, how we can approach those things using tarot and astrology. And, uh, I love yeah, that. that's what I got. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, Maisie. Uh, I really appreciate you. And I think this was a super helpful, insightful um, conversation and a great introduction into tarot for people who are maybe interested, who've never had access or had an opportunity to have a tarot reading. I think it was really great. Um, so I appreciate you for that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, all right, y'all. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Lots of love to all of you. I hope you have an excellent rest of your day and I'll see y'all on the flip side. Peace.